This is part 3 of my hip imaging in athlete series. If you haven't watched the other parts, go back and watch them first. This is just another variant. Again, you, the first one here we just had a look at, it's the supraacetabular fossa. And more medially you have this finger-like um, canal in the acetabular roof. It can be filled with fat, as in this case, sometimes fluid filled. And this is a so-called superior acetabular roof notch. Now back to some moving images here. And you can see this is a superior acetabular roof notch, as I have just shown you with the images from the publication. This is a different patient. And you can see here this finger-like finding. It's not really at the superior position. It's a little bit more medially and it can have different sizes and you can sometimes see it also on radiographs. And also this is just a normal variant. Don't mistake this as any pathology or something. So this black line that you can see here on the surface of the acetabular bone can actually be a sign of a cartilage delamination. It's like a closed delamination where you don't have fluid entering the two layers or between the two layers of cartilage, but it's more like a carpet that is not tightly attached. And this is sometimes referred to as a carpet sign um, during arthroscopy. And it's not visible on every sequence. I think it's T1 weighted sequences and intermediate weighted fat saturated sequences where you can see it. And it has a high specificity of over 90% if you believe the study, but it lacks really good sensitivity, which is as low as 22%. The ligamentum teres is a ligament in the hip that is not frequently looked at, and I think it's sometimes overlooked. It's an external rotation stabilizer, and if you have any forceful rotational movements, you can actually have a tear of this ligament, as in this case. And it's more frequently believed that it's actually a potential pain generator inside the joint. And this is just for comparison how it looks normally. So the message here is give the ligamentum teres a look on every hip MR image you, that you can find, and eventually we get a feeling whether it's normal or abnormal. So this is like a classic lesion that is described at this location. It's a so-called morel Lavalle lesion. And the name, it's French, and it really sounds much better if you pronounce it French. And instead of morel Lavalle, which is some, I don't know, it sounds like if you have something in the mouth. Though I have to be careful, I mean, I'm talking with an accent uh, but anyways, you, you get the point. And uh, Morel, La Vallée, it sounds better. Let's be honest here. Uh, basically, it's a um, degloving injury after like a motorcycle accident, something like that. You have these different layers that are delaminating from each other and the small vessels, lymph vessels and stuff like that, they cannot heal. They are filling this space. In, even if you do a puncture, and stuff like that. It's not going away, so it's very important to have this differential diagnosis in your arsenal and eventually give it as well because you don't want any surgeon to operate this as a sarcoma or you also don't want this just to be called a hematoma because then it would be assumed that it's resolving spontaneously, which would not happen in a morel Lavalle lesion. This is just a nice example of a strain of the iliopsoas tendon. You can see the feathery edema here at the myotendinous junction here. It's a really nice case. Now with hamstring tears, there is one structure I'd like to point out, and this is the sacrotuberous ligament here, because that ligament can be in continuity with the conjoint tendon that is consisting of the biceps femoris tendon and the semitendinosus tendon, but not with the semimembranosus tendon. And if you have a tear or a, a full thickness tear and this ligament remains intact, that means that you don't have a lot of retraction of the ruptured tendon. However, if this ligament is not really in continuity or is ruptured as well, then you typically have a lot of retraction of the ruptured tendon. Now this is just an example of a tear here, a typical location with some bone marrow edema here in a 12 year old gymnastic um, athlete. So they are pretty easy. Just to keep in mind that sometimes you have partial tears in older people that are asymptomatic. So. So I hope you liked this series 
And if you did, give it a like. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and also hit the bell button. Then you get automatically notified every time I upload a new video. Also comment below if you have any suggestions or comments on the content that I just showed you. And also be aware that I will not do that much videos in this format. It was more like a test for me and also I have to be honest, quite convenient because I prepare it all at once and then just uh, released it in three different episodes. The reason is because I have quite a lot going on in May and a lot of presentations all over the place. So um, it was very good for me to get a little bit of uh, extra time to do and prepare other stuff. Now with that, I'd like to close. Uh, thanks for watching and see you next time.